Our 2013 CES coverage is powered by Ford. Go further. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen here at CES 2013, checking out some really cool presence technologies from Beam. How are you? Uh, I'm here with Deborah and Palo Alto. De Deborah. Hi, great to see you guys. The, uh, the latency on this seems really low. Yeah, it's pretty much real time. It's, it's pretty cool. And can you show our viewers at home that you're not just a uh, static webcam and screen? Oh, sure, yeah. Let me, uh, let me do a little spin for you. And uh, I can go backwards and forwards, you know, pretty much wherever a person would want to go. You could totally just run down the hall right now, couldn't you? Well, I couldn't sprint, but I could, uh, I could walk briskly. <laughs> and so uh, how fast does this go and how long does it run for? So the highest speed is three miles an hour, which is a comfortable walking speed. So if you walk down the hall with someone, you can continue a conversation and keep up with them. Um, and using this all day, you could, you could get about eight hours of use. So basically, you know, I'm good for the entire convention and still have like an hour or so left of battery life. And uh, tell me about uh, Mike Sasso here to kind of help with some of the techie stuff as far as uh, the connectivity is concerned. Say like I wanted to deploy this uh, in a scenario for training. Um, what would I need connectivity wise? So what you need is uh, 802.11 and preferred. So we're having uh, two radios in there and one radio is basically connect constantly and the second radio is scanning. So we avoid that the one radio, the major radio, it's uh, leaving the connection and scans path. So you actually have a second radio looking for potential problems? Better, better connection, it connects to it, it uh, gets an IP address and uh, it checks the latency. And when it's better, then it will switch to the other uh, network card. And Deborah, how do you actually use this technology? Do you just log into like a, a web page and, and connect your webcam or what? Yeah, so basically the setup is really simple here. Um, I'm just at a desktop and I log in um, onto the client server and um, log into one of the beams that are accessible that I'm able to access. And I just control everything either with um, the arrows on my keyboard, my mouse, or some people prefer a joystick. Can you do WSAD like a gamer? Um, no, I'm not a gamer, so I have no idea how to do that. And what about the, uh, what do you see on the other end uh, as far as audio and video? So we can show you on the pilot station when you want to see it there. Okay, great. Let's uh, just walk over to the uh, pilot station. Yeah. Actually, let's put, uh, <laughs> that'd be actually really interesting if Deborah, as, uh, as a beam person here, could stand in front of another client and then become kind of a, a recursive beam, if you will. Interesting. I do have conversations with other beams. Really? <laughs> that must be interesting. I say, and can you just hop from beam to beam? Um, yeah. So I mean, I'd have to log out of this call, and then I jump on another beam. All right. Let's see how this works. Mike, uh, can you uh, walk me through this? So the best thing here is to someone in Palo Alto who is taking over and gives you a quick um, overview on how to beam into it and how to use it. I'm just going to show you, in addition to the camera here, which allows you to see everyone and interact, there's a camera right here. That shows you the furniture, my feet, all the things that you don't want to hit. Nice. I, right. That was the first thing that I noticed was I could, I could see your feet and I know not to bump into you. This is great. That's right. That's right. Okay. If you hold down your left arrow, you can do a full 360 of the room. Oh, I can see there's my docking station over there. Yeah. This is so seamless. Yeah. So really, it's the next best thing to be in here because you control what you see. You control where you go. You could go into an office to have a meeting with a colleague. You could go into a conference room to have a group meeting. Or you could just follow me down the hall. OK, pull right up. You can see there you are on the beam here in Palo Alto. Hi, me. <laughs> this is so great. I know, it is. So, you also, the beam is at the perfect height, so you can interact effectively with people who are standing up. You could also pull up to a conference room table, and you can interact effectively with people sitting down. Well, uh, tell me, what, what does this cost? Who is this for? What's the market? Uh, how do I get one? Yeah, it's, uh, about the whole system is $16,000. It's uh, for enterprise, it's an enterprise system, but we have, uh, we use it for office to office, so a CEO wants to go to different places and, uh, instantly like our CEO, uh, Scott Hassan. 
So he has multiple companies and he's switching between the companies on the same, the same ten, within 10 minutes. So what have been some of the challenges in bringing this to market and how close are you guys to you know, the, the full deployment that you envision? I think I think the biggest challenge for us engineering wise has been a lot of the of the microphone acoustics and stuff like that. That's been a big challenge. And another big challenge is just it's really trying to define the sales models for these things. This device can be used in multiple kind of applications, and so that's really the hard thing for us right now is what, what application we want to go after um, to start out with. And and so this being uh, is this the first generation of the unit to come to market? This is our first version right now. I, I just have to say that I'm really impressed with the technology. I'm a huge fan of, of things like you know William Gibson books, and this just seems like it's right out of that. So I can't wait until this kind of presence technology becomes ubiquitous. So uh, thank you. This is one of the coolest things I've seen at the show. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much. Well, that is Beam, and you can find them on the web at suitabletech.com. All right, and for continued coverage of all things CES 2013, be sure to head over to revision3.com. I'm here at the Ford booth at CES 2013 with Ed. How are you doing, Ed? Hi, Darren. How's it going? And we're checking out the TDK. What is a TDK? I'm used to an SDK. What, <laughs> right. is, what is TDK? TDK is a technology development kit um, that developers can get for uh, you know, app link enabling their apps instead of you know buying a vehicle or if they already have one, they can use an existing one. So this is a TDK. You basically have all the same interfaces as you would a, a normal vehicle. Um, you got the screen. You got the center stack with all the different buttons, preset buttons, forward, uh, back. Um, as well as some uh, car simulation uh, toggles, so you can turn the car off, open doors, um, set it to go forward and reverse, um, have it parked or not parked, things like that. So what kind of partners have you guys uh, teamed up with to enable apps to come to Ford? Right, so I mean everybody knows you know, a lot of the music streaming apps like Pandora, IR Radio, Slacker, NPR. Um, we also did some navigation based apps, uh, Scout from Telenav. Um, we have our own sync destinations, um, MLB at bat, um, and a whole slew of more coming out um, you know, every, every few months. Awesome. Where can our hackers find the developer network to start coding up some awesome stuff for it's, the core? It's pretty easy, just like everything else, developer.ford.com. There we go. All right. And with all of that, I want to thank once again Ford for powering our CES coverage.